This week in Nerf, we are not behind the Nerf wall. We are in a park because I've got some guests with me. And to be honest, this episode's probably going to be a little bit different and a little bit longer. So you saw that number in the bottom right and thought, Jang, what are you doing? We just, we want to have some good times. I got some guests. I got Adriana from Foam Blast. We got Drag, who you may or may not have heard about. On Nerf sometimes. Uh, he does some things. He's got some projects going on. But uh, we got Ragnar Oktoberfest going on this weekend. I am absolutely stoked for it. Glad that people have been able to come in from out of town for it. So we're gonna talk about that and a couple of things today. But let's let's start with that. What? Uh, how are you feeling about this? Oh, nervous. Since I, Michelle and I were helping with a lot of the planning, it's a lot, but it's gonna be so much fun. We've done the test game for Stalking Dead. That went spectacularly. I hope that the real game is half as good, then it will be excellent. So, like the complete foil of that, right? <laughs> I am so used to running these events for Nerf Wars, Nerf Games, for companies, whatever. I'm so not nervous, it's insane. I don't even know what to do with my jitters. I'm like, big event coming up, and I don't have to do anything. You just get to play. I was gonna say, for the first time in what feels like forever, for the first time in forever. I don't have to do anything. So I'm just stoked to be here. I literally crossed the country. Ragnarok is the West Coast's largest event ever. Like this is definitely going to be bigger than Armageddon, which is uh, this side of the country's big NIC war. It's got a flavor for everybody, yeah. You've got a little bit of HVZ, pseudo HVZ action. You got some competitive 5v5 and then uh, just rolling casual games the entire time. Yep. It's, uh, I was actually thinking about that point earlier, either today or yesterday, when I was stressing out about making sure everything's ready for the 5v5 tournament and all the stuff is getting done, which it's not, and we're, you know, a day out. But uh, we'll get there. That, that's we'll it, get though. There. Right? That's, that's always, as, as a con veteran, this is normal. Exactly. This like, is, you know, if you're not hot to. gluing your breastplate on, like, the morning You're of... not living. Exactly. Uh, but I, I figured, I was thinking about this, uh, you know, you ran End War and all of that, and the stress level for you is like, oh yeah, he doesn't actually have to do anything. That's... I didn't even bring a blaster. The uh, the girls picked me up from the airport and they were like, this is a caliber and you can use, and I was like, good, good to go. We're done, we're set. Exactly. Did you bring mags at least? I did bring some katana okay. magazines, okay, so they did warn need me. That. We're good um. there at least, but I just, on that point that this is the biggest West Coast event, I think it's awesome that we are getting to the point with uh, nerf events in our community that we're seeing multiple large-scale events happening and what it means for the future. I mean it's insane like the hobby grows every year and for those of us that believe and I think that truly 95% of the community believes factually that the rising tide raises all boats like this is incredible I had literally a client not a uh, not a nerfer like a company they were like how do you feel about this Ragnarok thing and I was like I'm stoked <laughs> like more nerfers means more attendance for all events period I was like I'm attending it it's gonna be awesome like um, so you do have Ragnarok which is insane that the West Coast has its own premier event now that's like being well attended even internationally um, and you have End War on the other side of the country. Someday End War will come to the West Coast, but End War is a traveling event. But then like, it's not just North America, and that's what's so incredibly cool. Like, the events that are happening, which are admittedly corporate sponsored in Malaysia, get bigger and better every year. The UK is about to do Foam Fest. Foam Fest. Foam Fest, Foam Fest yeah. is going to be the, the Little Islands. Um, huge invitational thing, and I know that like multiple makers from uh, Europe are coming over. I have every intention of making it myself. Like every time somebody plants a flag and says, you know what, win or lose, it's happening. We all win. Everybody benefits from a new event being put on. Everybody learns something. It really is just so cool to see the overseas things happening as well. It's and crazy. Just, I, I'm amped for many reasons, aside from just big events, but mm -hmm. big competitive events and more and more of that growing. And there's just, it's just I could go on a very long side tangent on that, but we will save that for another time. I'm wearing my jersey for our tournament on Sunday. Which we will be winning. But I mean, if the, you're playing, wait, what's is the point this, of not playing? Is this to win? going? This will go live tomorrow. So they'll so we don't know. We I'm, don't know yet. When this goes right, live, this is, we have not played. This is my Bambino shot. We're taking it home, boys. <laughs> All three of us are on the same team, by the way. It would be so way. embarrassing if I like made that comment and the video went live after we like got dream crushed. That would, uh... 
Like you could be on you. You could run the clip though. Would be the best thing. You could be like, here's Drag getting shot four times in slow mo. We did not win. We did Epic not. fail. Like, It'll be fine, because Dauntless is going to win. It's true. That's, it's happening. That's all, that, that's all there is. They Team vetoed my name Fab Five. It's because we have seven. Because there are seven people. That was a good reason, <laughs> to be it's, fair. You know, but uh, we talked a little bit about Ragnatorius, and I think we'll come back around to it with some closing thoughts. But there's one other thing I want to talk about today. Is we are doing a little bit of a different episode. So rather than talk about things that happened uh, in terms of news this week, I want to talk about some trends. And uh, this is, to be fair, sparked by some things that have happened in recent weeks, namely this week, uh, Mr. Heath Pants releasing the files for his dessert pigeon, which... It, is it dessert? Dessert? Or it's like dessert. it's tasty? It's dessert, oh, that's yeah. Great. Dessert pigeon, yeah. <laughs> it is a pigeon of yogurt. Yes. <laughs> Sweet and savory. Uh, he released the files for it, which is awesome with the uh, the new Flywheel of the World cage inside of it and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have the Rainbow Pistol uh, cosmetic kit that was released that is kind of emulating a Glock with a suppressor, I, mean, it, I believe it looks like. It looks like a Gen 4 Glock, boys. Like, yeah. it's it's a suppressed Gen 4 Glock <laughs> rainbow pistol that happens to have a thing coming out the back. Which, I'm wrong, it looks great, but then, then you've also got... It looks phenomenal, and the, whoever did that, do you know the name? The name is escaping me at the moment. It comes from that Reddit land or whatever, but uh, you're yeah. better at that sort of thing. Um, I have a phone. It, uh, We're doing it live. <laughs> whoever you are, Jangular will find the name. Hats off to you, like, you did something very cool. It looks great. Like, legitimately, it looks like a polymer frame firearm. Um, I just really appreciate that, at least for that first one that you released, it's in pastel colors and it looks completely innocuous. I think that that was 100% the way to go, and I tip my bandana to you, sir. Like, well done. But beyond that as well, we also have Atch uh, attachments. Uh, so the, the Rainbow Pistol was uh, Taubog, T-A-O-B-O-G. Dalbog. Uh, Sounds like a bad guy from Lord of the Rings. Yeah. So He's the also, Balrog's cousin. We've also got Atch attachments with their auto pistol. I just put my leg in a spider web with a spider in it. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, Don't die. And that's how we We're lost 5v5, boys. <laughs> I'm afraid. Uh, this, is, this is going wonderfully. But regardless, the point is these new blasters that are being made by people are coming out and they are emulating real steel guns and they look fantastic don't be wrong they look really cool but how do you feel about them being in public spaces being games you can say these should all be just in private games but we know people aren't going to do that right so once they're out there they're out there right like and as much as we could talk about ethically like was this the right thing or not like somebody was going to do it eventually at least the people who did it did it well but like now we kind of, I think that the pressure is not on makers, because makers gonna make. Yeah. I think the pressure is on game organizers to figure out like, will our rules be color based? Or like, are we really just gonna have to eventually say like, if the profile of this looks like a firearm, it's out. And I think, I know how the SCNC is gonna handle it and I know how End War is gonna handle it, but I wanna get you guys' thoughts first, because you both organize games. What do you think, Soon. Eddie? Soon I will be organizing games. It's, it's You're happening. working on it. <laughs> working You're in on the it. process. Yes. I think that they look really, really cool. And I wouldn't even mind having dark colored ones in my house or at private indoor events. But for anything used outdoors, like, you gotta do bright colors. You gotta do pastels, oranges, neons. Super bright, super toy. And it's definitely going to be on top of organizers to be like, to actually put their foot down and say, no, you can't use that red blaster that looks like a gun. It's, uh, it's a tough one. Uh, I want all of these, to be honest. I, right. want, no. I yeah. want my own. I want to have them. I want to own them. I think the creators have done fantastic yeah. things. Um, I mean, I just got my desert pigeon dessert, dessert, dessert pigeon dessert. in, like, and I love it. I love everything it's about delicious. it. delicious. <laughs> it's, it's so tasty, that PLA goodness. <sighs> they're just they're so nice looking. I, I need to own them, but I'm always hesitant to bring them out to games. Why not get them in ice cream colors? That's where we're at with that this. Is, uh, I mean, that is most yeah, of the slides the you see with mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the Glock and the pastel fade, which the fade looks... I mean, that's your bread and butter, too. It is. Like, I mean, it is. He couldn't have pitched better just, let's, for let's like... Let's talk about this. Our jerseys are fabulous colors. This was not my doing. He actually didn't want fabulous colors. I tried this for time. once. For once, I tried. We haven't done it yet, but we did talk about it. I want us to go out and get team manicures. 
I look like I'm all for some I painted want, nails. I want pastel nails. I want to feel fabulous while I'm smashing baddies. Like, I mean, do we have time to do that after this? I don't know. I, maybe I mean, we'll, we we'll have. See what we can do. We got to drag Luke out too. Luke, I yes. feel like yeah. he is in a two-girl household though. He might be outnumbered. We might be able to sell him. That's true. Um. Okay, so. This is very, very... Maybe tomorrow. We're so <laughs> off the firearms topic. To bring it back, how End War and uh, the SCNC are going to approach this. And I mean, again, this sounds very heavy-handed, and I make decisions in End War with an admin team, and I make, or yes, with a moderator and admin team, and I make decisions in the SCNC with some of my very closest friends. But I normally get to put out the idea, and then we formulate around that. So what I want to do, because we've already kind of... We've already opened the door with scar kits, with vector kits, and we've said that those are fine. We're even okay with the black vector kits as long as they're on a white strife or what have you. So I think that we're going to go color-based till sundown. That's I think that makes sense. it does get a little bit complicated, but people are gonna build them no matter what, and if people build them, they're gonna wanna use them. The SCNC has such an amazing culture where like we're still, no matter what, 100 people in a field where, and this is, again, like, I don't want to put it all in game organizers, but, and I am speaking to like a serious percentage of Jangular's audience, I know that some of you guys run arenas, this is your small business, your side hustle, your birthday party thing, but I also know that some of you are just running local park games, and I think that like, as easy as it is to just throw the Facebook group up, lay your rules out, and go, I think that once you know that your event is going to be a thing, there is an ethical responsibility to contact your local law enforcement and preempt the conversation, especially since like, yeah, we cover everything in orange flagging tape that looks like it could possibly be dangerous. And we insist that most of our players, because as long as the majority of you guys are covering the minority, like TK1138 shows up in riot gear half the time. Players like Captain Xavier shows up in riot gear. Like, that would be a very dangerous thing. If that's the first thing an officer sees checking out your event, that's no bueno. But if they're always surrounded by a dozen people in shorts and jerseys, with brightly colored body kits and stripes. Like, I don't think that we can take the firearm kits out of the hobby. That damage is done. People want to build scars. People want to build vectors. But I think that if we contact local law enforcement, make it clear to them that what we're doing is ethical, is safe, and we take personal responsibility for the games that we organize, and then we insist that any body kits that could be perceived not toy only be used before sundown, I think that we, like, limit our liability from like, ah, oh, this is maybe like a 1% to a fraction of a 1%. And like, any step iterated over the duration of our hobby, like, as game organizers, that responsibility's on us. So, somebody's culpable. <laughs> so, yeah, always. I, I think that's actually a really good point that they are in the hobby already. It, it's, it's a part of our community. Yeah. It's, whether you like it or not, it is becoming ingrained. So I think that's a very valid point that do what we can to mitigate that is is a good process to take and they yeah. it sounds doom and gloom it sounds like i'm like oh man these things are bad for nerf and they're not like the ergonomics yeah. of real steel applications are. are amazing and if that's what it takes for you to feel like your inner super soldier on the field or if it makes you play better by all means but don't take something away from the community or your fellow local players by like making yourself into a target for a conversation that we never want to have ever. It all comes down to rule zero, really. Exactly. It's, like, it's don't be that guy Try or girl. not to give your organizers a hard time. <laughs> they are trying to do their best to put on a game for you that in a lot of cases doesn't cost you anything and is a massive time investment on their part. I've touched on this before, but thank your game work as a, organizers. It's, it's yeah. way too often I see things go underappreciated and uh, only did I learn by how much when I started trying to organize things, so... Everybody's a critic until they try it themselves. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Uh, but good good point on contacting your local law enforcement. We've had uh, the cops called on us at the old burn games, and because it was obvious that there's just a bunch of people playing with Nerf Blasters, they didn't even get out of their cars. They rolled up, looked, and then rolled out. To, to share one more personal story, and I do not want to turn this into the twin Drac episode, uh, SCNC 20-something, I'm not even there. 
Like, I think I'm in Ohio doing something with Vlad for whatever reason. And I get a phone call because when I had this conversation with local law enforcement for East Cobb Park, which is the one that we play at often, yeah. I gave them my complete information. And so I'm not in the state, but it is a Saturday at about noon. And I get the phone call that's like, hey, we got to report that there are kids with, with guns at this park. And we have here on our little pegboard in our office that like, it's the second Saturday of the month. Is that your boys? And the conversation, like the SCNC didn't even know about this until I posted an admin chat because I was just like, yep, those are my guys, no worries. Click, buy, have a nice day. And it wasn't ever an issue. It was not a waste of police resources driving out there, checking it out, filing a report. It was as simple as like, we already know what's going on. We know exactly who we can call to verify that that's what's going on. One super mom is not worth <laughs> disrupting everybody's day because yeah. a police visit does interact interrupt the pace of play for your entire day it's a weird conversation that you have to have it's uncomfortable oftentimes and when you're talking about a hundred people in a field who all gave up their saturday like even 10 minutes of everybody's day is a thousand minutes it like, changes the mood of the entire entire event as well when you know that something is coming down on the event and you have to wonder are we going to get to finish the game what's going on how long is this going to take out of our play can we play next month exactly yeah yeah, yeah exactly uh, there's there's so much to it so just take the proper steps if you can it's a good having the law enforcement on your side is a wonderful thing wonderful thing. Yeah. If you can get them on your side before it's a problem, they're more they inclined are. to stay on your side, too. So let, let's, uh, let's go ahead and move on from that, and let's go ahead and just kind of touch on one more thing in general of what everybody's up to, what you're looking for. Instead of what you're up to, what you're looking forward to in the future of this hobby and community. Oh, wow. Way to open we'll her go, up. Like. We'll go big. We're going big. Since this, you notice, I did not start big. this episode with this is your source for news and all of that good oh, stuff with my usual line because this episode is, it's more of a round table. So we're, we're just... We're dreaming on camera? We're dreaming oh, on camera, yes. Dream big. <laughs> what do you got, Addy? Oh, I just want to see more people playing. Like, modding's fun and all. I like modding. But playing is way better. Like, I want events somewhere every weekend, people going outside, having fun, getting their families involved, getting their friends involved. It's just too much fun to not do. So if you have been modding blasters, but haven't been playing with them, like going out and shooting your friends, go shoot your friends. <laughs> It's fun. Quote, Adriana Foam Blast, shoot your friends. And the final episode of Twin. Yeah, there it goes. It's, it's done. The Google bot just dropped. Um, that's a good point. Like, I think that a lot of the times it's very easy, specifically if your brain is wired certain ways, to like forget that there's a massive social aspect to this hobby. And it is so much fun to build things in your basement and like have that be your primary contribution. That yeah. It is easy to like... I'm gonna build this, 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 and two months have gone by and you haven't seen any other nerfers. Like, even mod parties, like if that's your favorite part of the hobby, is building the blasters, like building with your fellow nerfers is always gonna be more fun. Slightly less productive. Yeah, but, but you uh, get great ideas. Interacting with other people in person, you get things out of it that you don't get online or other yeah. uh, communication methods because it's so much quicker and efficient and hands-on and you can have something in hand and hand it to somebody and they can say, oh, this is cool, but what about this thing here? And you just never would have seen that if they hadn't had their hands on it and felt something. 90% uh, of communication is nonverbal. We miss so much jumping into our digital text-based lingo and jargon. And you were talking about how it's hard to like go out and be social. And in a lot of cases, yeah, but I've never once had that problem with any nerf event. It's so like, inclusive, yeah. Nerfers are so nice. You're not weird because we're all freaking weird playing with toys. Weird is the new great. normal. <laughs> I'm gonna touch on this more in the, I'm, I'm working on a why I nerf video to follow up on the one Walcom did and some others uh, did their versions of. And just 
short and sweet, Nerf got me out of the house to hang out with other people at some of the lowest points for me. So it's a wonderful community to meet people, to find like-minded people. So do so, find them, enjoy their company, make friends. You will not regret it. What he said. We are social animals deep down inside. It's true. It's true. Delicious social animals. <laughs> that got a little bit weird. Yeah, well. On that note, what uh, what, what are you looking forward to? Um, you know, the usual, like, long walks on the beach by moonlight, the blood of my enemies and ruby glazed chalices. Uh, seriously, um, the community is growing in a way that, like, so many things that I, like, was dreaming about nine years ago, ten years ago, have already, like, come to pass and are constantly getting better, like, with no hands on the wheel, so... Things that I'm like super excited about are where competitive nerf is headed, what that means for me as like the premier event organizer or what have you. Like I, uh, I've always had this dream. I've never like said this on camera on my channel, so I'll give it to Jangular's channel. Uh, End War was never supposed to be an HVZ Invitational. We needed an HVZ Invitational in a moment of sheer desperation in 2017 and so I pulled the folder called End War off my desktop and adapted the event into what I felt like the community needed but what it was always supposed to be was and, and Jangular will know what I'm talking about here when I say this but it was always supposed to be the pro tour of Nerf and it was supposed to like really give us everything from like a vessel into a hall of fame, like immortality for winning teams, like a real record of our hobby, a tapestry of us. And that was what the, the name was. It was the war to end all wars, end war. And I still have that folder just because I've transformed it into this one thing and it's done something tremendous for the hobby. And I think that like, not humble bragging, like it's brought us together in a way that had never been done before and it was very, very satisfying to see that happen. It still isn't my dream for End War yet. Like it still isn't the complete tapestry of us because it's only serving three of what I consider to be like a six faceted sort of community and sphere. And so I want to get it to that point where that's what it does. And I think that every year I get a little bit closer as I throw my dart and with things like the BTA, with things like Atomic, with things like Speed Flag, like all of these things coming together and proving that like... People want to compete. Is, that <laughs> we, we aren't just a fun friendly let's all be goofball kids thing that like this could very easily be. It doesn't have to be paintball light, it doesn't have to be like airsoft for wusses like and I've heard, I mean anyone who's watched Nerf videos has seen that in the comments like grow up, play paintball, nut up, play airsoft like it's so much more than that, it is its unique flavor, yeah. it incorporates honestly like cardio in a very different way than those sports do and it can be very very rewarding to train and compete and play in our space and so like that's something that I'm super jazzed for if we want to get into something like very selfish, Addy is wearing my logo, like I have uh, developed a relationship where I can machine these just really cool parts. And so every night as I'm going to bed, I'm constantly thinking like, what could I make? So unfortunately, on a very selfish vein, that conversation begins in my head with like, wouldn't it be cool if I had? And so like Nick's was, I wanted a cage specifically for humans versus zombies, like something designed with that in mind exactly for like, top shelf performance at end war and then uh tooth and nail was gosh i'm tired of do you want to be in that shot no no okay you're good <laughs> tooth and nail was like a combination of using funky filaments where my plungers kept shattering using good filaments and making the plungers too heavy because i'm printing them strong uh wearing out sears uncomfortable triggers and just feeling like this system could be better and if it was all made at the same time in the same way and mated to itself it could be very beautiful and very comfortable and luckily like fortunately huge thank you to the community to the supporters of those projects each one has been very well received and tremendously successful so far if this episode is going up tomorrow there's still time to get in on tooth and nail but uh 
but uh, I don't know. This is the first time I'm out of words. What do I say? <laughs> we did there, it. There is no corollary. Like, it's it just, there's still time. You can make it. It took an entire twin episode, but we got there. I was gonna say, <laughs> nine years of Nerf videos, and here we are, speechless. Um, but uh, that's, that's, I guess, my two big things. Like, I want End War to get to where its ultimate dream and incarnation was, which was very fantastic and would have taken four or five years to get to either way. So, like, why not? start now there's no time like the emergency and then uh machining parts has just been very satisfying and very new for me and i'm really happy doing it so i'm really grateful that you guys make it possible for me to keep going and i just want to see everyone that wants to play playing <laughs> a very simple we're getting there <laughs> a simple but grandiose thought my dream is eight minutes of footage <laughs> addy's dream is like won't you please play more <laughs> They tie in together with well, me. though. Like. They tie in together well, though. And I'm, I'm going to uh, carry on that sentiment because, well, if you've watched this channel for any period of time, you know that I am a very competitive person. I got into this hobby and um, less than half a year into the hobby, I approached the rest of the burn people and started talking about how can we make this competitive? How can we, can we make a league? Let's start doing, let's start talking rules. And that's when the BTA was unofficially formed and then health issues prolonged the, the, the creation of it. But my end goal is similar to yours in that I want national, international, worldwide competition and players coming together, teams coming together. And that creates to me a separate facet of the hobby that while it may be separate, also engages and furthers the entirety of the community. Rising tide. And that's all there boats. It, is. <laughs> it creates something you can play paintball competitively or not play paintball competitively and still take advantage of the advancements that have been made because of competitive I mean, paintball. Absolutely. And like so, woods ball markers have come so exactly. far because speedball has hundred thousand dollar prize pools. So like, there's there's so much to gain for everybody, even if competitive isn't necessarily your cup of tea. It doesn't mean it's a bad thing, and I have no desire for competitive to be the only way to nerf. Nerfing is inherently a fun, goofy thing, but I inherently love to make things competitive. It's just who you are. It is just who I am. It's a problem at times. But regardless, I, I have so many thoughts and ideas and plans, and I'm sure at some point we will have discussions because we have similar goals. I mean, we've actually... Not to like pull the veil behind, but like we've mind melded a couple of times on just like the entry vector and eventually we're going to wind up in the same place. I believe so. Like, uh, it's, things will come together to create what will be necessary for the community to have one spot. And that is the goal of the BTA is to right. be, the BTA is not one league. It's not one game. It's an amalgamation of, of, of leagues and players and groups coming together to have one source for everything they need. To grow the competitive hobby and the competitive scene and that's and it's super international yeah. that's the, at this point which exactly, is very very yeah. cool because like you as a north american nerfer which is the majority of yes. this show's audience like you may never get the chance to play what do they call it quick flag in singapore and it's a completely unique distinctive flavor of nerf that truly doesn't exist anywhere else in 2018 it has like remnants of 2009-2010 NIC play, but it's its own animal completely. But the accessibility to not only those resources and rule sets, but also like the coverage of it yeah. that yeah. the, the BTA provides means that like, while you might not ever get to like bite into it personally, like you can recreate it, you can take that recipe and run it in your backyard. You wanna make it as available as possible for everybody. And if you don't have the people yet, we're working on ways to get as much footage out there to people so people can at least vicariously experience it until they're able to yeah. firsthand experience it. Uh, and it's I've, also good for showing people, like, this is what yeah, I want to do. Exactly. Do you think this looks like fun? I have approached <laughs> this, I have always wanted this to be a television grade competition. That is, that is the goal, to have that sort of production value, that sort of competition quality, and that is... <laughs> I'm just... I, NBL. Like, <laughs> guys, I'm sorry, trust me. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Just keep trusting me. Give me, give me another year and a half. 
We'll have to have a discussion then if there's if there's things if there's things related to that. There are a lot of things related to that that cannot be touched on publicly. We'll have a private discussion if you're willing then. Yeah, yeah, I, I would yeah. love to, I would love to hear and see where things can be I will tell you as taken. much as I possibly can about it. Awesome. I'm, um, I'm sorry to have to leave you all with that. I mean, but I can't not ask that question. It is what it is. Um, like it is the highest production quality for anything like what we're doing, but it also it's a very unique opportunity that is inherently easy to misinterpret, I think, on the front end. And we'll get there. It's a process. Well, it'll be, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, I think the one thing that I'll say, and then I do want to stop talking about it before I get myself into trouble, is that companies don't understand us yet. And we're working on it. Part of, part of uh, my viewpoint is, well, we have the bigger companies that are willing to, to put down for things like the MBL. Uh, I've always wanted the community companies to be able to grow to a point where they are the companies. They exactly. are the people sponsoring. They are able to be self-sufficient because not only is it great then that they can sponsor and help produce and create these great things and competitions for all of us, events like Ragnar Oktoberfest and That's war. Good. And it's already happening. Exactly. Is what's so exciting about it. And I think that every Every End War, every Ragnarok, every Foam Fest, and every NBL takes us one step closer to again like that end vector where like we are all on the same page yes. and they're sponsoring our events and we're attending theirs. Like right now, there's still a dividing line that's about six figures of dividing <laughs> line. But I mean, as, as Foam Blast, we're so excited whenever we get the opportunity to be able to sponsor an event like when we sponsored Inmore and we're sponsoring Ragnarok and also helping run that and uh, I believe we're planning on sponsoring Foam Fest. I think nice. that I think that Michelle officially said yes to them. Um, You've got it on camera yeah. so now Michelle's <laughs> so, gonna say. So now we are. I'm tied us in. <laughs> Michelle you're giving money to the UK now. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Addy just Addy just float. I think it was already done. We're just teasing. Pretty, pretty sure that was already Michelle, done. Michelle, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best. Michelle, Michelle's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, we've, we've been able to sponsor um, mod parties, a couple of smaller HBZ events, and we're just so happy to have people approach us and be like, can you help us make this better? And we're like, yes, make everything great, please. I mean, as. As the primary event organizer of End War, it is so huge to have this triple threat of Foam Blast, Containment Crew, and Out of Darts, like, willing to step up, willing to invest into the thing that will ultimately, like, again, I keep coming back to this rising tide raising all boats, but when the boats are pulling water out of their boats and throwing it into the <laughs> lake, like, that's huge. Like, it accelerates this process and it kind of opens the way because, like, it makes everything so accessible. If you're a kid starting up his Etsy shop for 3D printed Nerf whatever, like this is, again, compared to paintball, compared to airsoft, like Nerf is so accessible not only for like new players, it's cheaper to become a competitive Nerfer than oh, yeah. any other shooting sport, period. Um, but it's also cheaper to enter this space professionally right now than it's ever been before and probably ever will be again. That's a very valid point. I, I was just going to make the point that we are still very young. Now there's people that have been in this, in this hobby for over a decade. But this community and this hobby and this business space is so young. It's the early days of Woods Bowl. Yes. Uh, of, of, you know, Airsoft when you had like Tokyo Maruri and like some other, I think Classic Army was one of the early, early adapters of Airsoft stuff. Oh, but I mean. just, it, it's... It's the early days, and we are not at that point where we are a massive industry, but I believe we can get there. I think that we will, certainly, like knowing what I know about the it, industry, we're like stepping into this room as these newcomers to an industry that has been very stagnant for a long time, and they don't really know what to do with us yet, but they understand that like, Nothing is as lean as what we do. Nothing is as quick as like foam blasts. Like you guys can, I mean, tooth and nail, like our ability as super small, very passion driven 
lean, tiny businesses in our space allows us to go from dream to concept to reality within a quarter, which is unheard of. Like especially, like we're making things that we want to make because we want to use it. Exactly. And we want to see other people using it and being accessible and to raise it for everyone. It doesn't start in a boardroom for us. It doesn't take 18 months to get to yeah. production. We're a yeah. hobby of passion. Exactly. And that's what's causing the growth so exponentially right now. Uh, in terms of creators yeah. and amazing things we're seeing. Uh, we've gone from a couple, place of a couple years to relying on Hasbro shells or Busby shells or whatever exactly. company shells to, you know, the Caliburn, the uh, uh, the Cita, the Exus, the Jupiter, the Jupiter Swordfish, the, Swordfish, the uh, uh, MHP-15 to the Desert Pigeon to so many blasters. That, I mean, I could go on for another minute of other it's actually communities. as of right now. If you went to a Toys R Us, Good my luck. bad. It's they're just, coming back. It's just they're kind of coming back. It's. I'll tell you more about that behind closed doors too. Oh goody! Um, <laughs> it never ends. It doesn't end. Yes, so many. Um, it's very unique and very interesting right now. That if you walked into a Walmart today, you would see a dozen Nerf blasters, six Adventure Zone blasters, a couple of Zuru blasters, and maybe a couple of the Adventure Force Busby things. All in all. Said and done, 22, 24 different SKUs for blaster products. And that's a whole aisle. That's a lot for our hobby to have that. That's more than airsoft and paintball combined at retail. Like, So while we are a very niche, small hobby, we have this really weird space that's so professionally fascinating. But the point is that there's 22 things on the shelf at Walmart. There's 24 things on the shelf at Target today, right now. And our hobby outpaces that twofold. Like there are 50 different iterative designs, community driven designs, operations, or things that you could build at home right now with a printer, with PVC, with an idea or a dream. Like we have more options in our space built by single or partnerships or, or individuals or what have you, like small companies than the industry at large. And they are constantly trying to crank out more things and we still outpace them. Like that is passion for product. You can't buy that in industry. Yeah. Like, when you don't have all the red tape to cut through and all of the layers of a massive company, you can do things at a higher rate. Absolutely. And even better, there's so many things that are just available online. Like, if you have a printer, now you have a blaster. And that's just insane. So, as actually. On this point, I realize we have one of the largest Nerf companies in the hobby with us right now. Oh, Captive. Yeah. What, yeah. Is, yeah. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the growth of community-based companies and where will they go in terms of being able to support themselves? Because to me, I really want to see these companies be able to be self-sufficient and that be their primary source of income. What do you think it'll take to get to that point? I mean, it's really just going to take growth in the amount of people who are serious about Nerf and like con just continuously playing and upgrading and trying to find new things to do and if you're just starting out like there are so many things you can make with just a 3D printer and that's awesome and if you have a little bit of money What's Foam Blast's 3D printer recommendation? Uh, right Foam Blast 3D printer recommendation is the Kitty X1, Why? I think is what it's called. Because the bed does not go back and forth oh. and shake your print all over the place. The bed slowly rises and the print head moves. And so it's just clean and easy and we don't need to mess with the settings too much. <laughs> is there a word for that? Because it sounds to me like how MakerBots work. There is a word for it, but I don't know it because but, Michelle deals right. with it. <laughs> Presumably it's more affordable, right? Than like a MakerBot uh, or something in that vein. I don't know what MakerBots cost. 2000 Yes, it's more affordable okay, than that. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the KDX one is 400 new, Does it I come pre-assembled? It does come pre-assembled. Wow. That is so, CR10 pricing, yeah. and you say that that feature is much nicer for you guys. That feature is so great. The problem is a small print bed. Well, I mean, but, not all of the, again, like, yeah. hobby is so inclusive. Our biggest blaster is the caliber. Yeah? Yeah. Like, as I a hobby. I believe that can be printed 100 by 100, or is it 150 by 150? 
I don't know what it is specifically, but I know that every step of the way, Slug has sliced those files for the smallest bed possible. Yeah. It might not always be the cleanest, but he will... M I'm sure that you could print a Caliburn on pretty much anything but a Mini right now. I think so, yeah. But it's it's crazy how much you can do with, with just a 3D printer, and if you have a little bit of money, it's not that hard to get things made in China. If you have a lot of money, it's better to get things made in the U.S. <laughs> I'm so excited for this community to have a lot of money in terms of production runs of things. Yeah, but I mean, as as far as Foam Blast goes, like, all the money we make, we're just dumping right back into Foam Blast so we can make that bigger and offer more, make more things, sponsor more events. Like, that's all we really want, to, we want out of it. We want our company to fund our hobby. And it's done that so far, and that's awesome. And that is so cool that you're able to do that. You've gotten yeah. to the point where that is the case. So I, I'm excited. I, yeah. I think I think I think we're all excited for the things that are upcoming. This is the best timeline, boys. <laughs> we made it. Like we're not Danny Pudi with a with a goatee and a <laughs> exactly. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for Ragnar Toberfest this weekend. Okay, so you it's wanted to bring so it back fun. to that, and yes. I actually thought of a really good question. Okay. Before I ask the, I think we're wrapping it up. I so think so. Before yes. I ask the final question, I need to apologize to Jang's viewers. This is episode 80 of Twin. Uh, Jangular and I are in a chat, and I'm always salty. I'm like, hey, yo, I did this cool thing. Hey, yo, I did this cool thing. And Jangular's always like, to your credit, I get it and I actually support it, and I just like ribbing you more than anything I, I, else. And I'm okay with Jangular that. always wants to support the smaller creators that he can because this show has the ability to signal boost people who can really benefit from that in a way that my channel neither needs nor requires. Like, those are, those are synonyms, but you know what I mean. So like, I, I joked about it, I was like, for the first time ever, I get to get in front of the twin camera. <laughs> We're probably in a 50 minute episode right now where I've talked for 30 minutes, so I'm super sorry, Jangular's audience, for your Drac episode. The Drac episode. Ugh. With Addy. With Addy. Featuring Addy. <laughs> in a Drac t-shirt. That's, that's the title. That's the title right there. Um, Boom. Done. But uh, the question that I thought of while I was rambling to your audience was, I think the best way to end this episode is what is the number one thing that you are most excited about going into this weekend and I'll let you guys answer first so I don't repeat anything oh, I'm gonna go first I am so excited just to meet everyone there are people that I've talked to online that I get to meet in person that I've met before and that's awesome to see them again and then there's people I've talked to online that I get to meet for the first time and that's almost even better just to finally get that face-to-face -face with people that I genuinely care about is just so great. I, I, I could feel that. I, I know Endor was a massive experience for me getting to meet people finally. However, um, that whole competitive thing <laughs> kicking in again. I, after, after starting the league here and running things, sort of running things with the help of many amazing people, I finally really get to play this weekend and not just be a sub for a team. So I'm I'm pretty much looking forward to that. That's I, uh, yeah. All right. So, Eddie stole mine, which is why I wanted <laughs> you to go first. I had this whole speech about how like I've never been to this specific zone of North America, which is ridiculous, and I'm super stoked about that. But since you took it, and I said I got to pick one thing, I'm cheating my way into. I'm actually super duper stoked as Old Blood HVZ. I have never been to a successful. HVHVZ like I think this will be and because of it I am a little bit biased I think that HVHVZ has some inherent like game building flaws it would be like magic with four colors um, and I am so excited more than anything to be proven absolutely unequivocally wrong because I know you guys have put a ton of effort into it and I'm really stoked I'm Open hearts and minds, it. let's go. Like. Let's do it. That's going to conclude the roundtable episode. We're back to regular type of news next week, so look forward to that. I didn't do a video or mod of the week this week, but if you haven't checked out Prickly Nerf's uh, Crimson Longshot integration, definitely go check that out on their Facebook page. I'll see if I can find a link for that down below. Thank you again so much to Adriano Foam Blast and Drac. Definitely go purchase their products check out the kickstarters watch the videos do all that good stuff thank you so much if you made it to the end of this video 
you're kind of awesome. So thank you so much I'm for that. I, I guess surprised. we're just all doing this. Yeah. <laughs> thank you so much for the support. I appreciate every single one of you. I, uh, I think that's all there's left to say. Wait, don't drop yeah. it. Don't drop what? The dun to dun. As always, thank you so much for watching. No, I'm Jangler. I'll see you next time. Can't let Drac have his own way.